What up YouTube fam, we in here, Anthony Talk Life, back with another video. It's been a while since I've stood in front of this camera and made a video, so it feels good to be back making some videos, dropping some content. This week, we are continuing our series on portrait lighting and we are talking about loop lighting. Now, loop lighting is very similar to Rembrandt lighting. There is a key characteristic difference in the look, which I'll touch on in just a moment, but they are very much the same. The main difference between your Rembrandt and your loop is the drama on the shadow side of the face. Your Rembrandt is going to have more shadow, more drama, where your loop lighting is gonna still have that shadow on that side of the face, but it's not gonna be quite as intense and dramatic. So if you want that Rembrandt lighting, that again is that classic, timeless portrait lighting, but you don't want it to be too dramatic, that's where your loop lighting is really gonna come in. You get the benefit of having nice, somewhat broad light on the face while still having that shadow side that adds that drama and it also helps slim the face. So if you're shooting a subject that has an oval face, Rembrandt and loop lighting is really good to use in that instance because it really helps to slim that face due to those shadows. And the same way where you can really adjust the intensity of that with Rembrandt, you can do the same thing with loop lighting depending upon how far around you bring your light, which I will show you later on in the video. As a matter of fact, let's just get into it right now because I don't have anything else to explain about loop lighting. So let me show you how you achieve loop lighting. So when it comes to the positioning of your light for loop lighting, it is very similar to Rembrandt lighting. Now with Rembrandt lighting, you would want your light to be placed 45 degrees off camera axis and 45 degrees angled down. With loop lighting, you want that light to be more 40 or 35 degrees. So instead of being here, you wanna bring that light around a little bit more. And by bringing that light around, you're lighting the face more. So that's where you're losing some of that drama that you have with your Rembrandt lighting so you're lighting the face more but because it's not quite broad lit you're not on camera axis you still are getting some shadow on that side of the face so you still have that slimming you still have that depth and that drama but it's not quite as intense as Rembrandt so uh, to keep this easy I'm gonna just use a little flashlight just because it's easy so if we start this out in the Rembrandt lighting position first if I can get this light, this is a very small light source. So trying to get it where it needs to be is a little bit challenging. So right now we have the triangle there for your Rembrandt. And so I'm essentially at that 45 degree. Now, as I start to bring that light over, you can see that now we get that classic loop shadow that is loop lighting. So just by having that light more uh, 45 degree, we close that shadow. And that's ultimately the difference. With your Rembrandt, you're gonna have a closed shadow here and you're gonna have that triangle. Whereas with your uh, loop lighting, that shadow is not gonna connect and you're gonna have this loop shadow right here and you're gonna have more light hitting the face. But as you can see, you still have that shadow definition on that side. So if you look at how lit this side is, we still have some shadow over here. So it still slims the face and it still adds that drama so that it's not flat light, flat lit, something along those lines. So you still have that drama. So you get the benefit of your Rembrandt lighting without having all of the drama with Rembrandt. So again, this is a really good light to use for people who have an oval face. It helps slim, and it's also just a classic timeless look the same way Rembrandt lighting is. So I've now switched over to a 25 inch Octabox on the 8400 with the modeling lamp. I have turned the video light off so that way you can see it because this is a softer light and not as bright and intense. So as you can see here, we're starting with that Rembrandt. We've got that triangle of light right here. We've got our light in that 45 degree position, 45 degree angle down. Now, if I slowly start to bring that light over, you will see that that shadow opens up and we get that loop on the face. Now, as you can see, as we open that up, if you pay attention to this, the shadow side of the face, so your shadow detail right here and even right here, as we start to bring that light around and that opens up, you can see that we're opening up those shadows. So that's what I was talking about when I said that loop lighting is very much like Rembrandt lighting. It's just not as intense. And so you can see Again, if I come back more into the Rembrandt, you've got a lot of shadow there. And as I bring that around and I open that up and we get that loop 
light right there, you can see that this shadow side of the face opens up more. And depending upon how much you bring that around, you can adjust that loop. And depending upon how high you have it, how low you have it, you can adjust where that loop will sit. So that is really up to taste on what you like, what look you're going for, and what works best for your subject. So there is some flexibility there. So there you have it fam. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, or if you just wanna support me and my channel, please give this video a thumbs up on your way out. You know that it does help. And if you wanna make sure that you don't miss any future videos, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell. As always, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching my videos. And until the next video, take care. Thank you.